welcome to supermani uh, please hit the bell icon please subscribe uh, i'm trying to increase the number of subscribers and it's not going up so uh, one of the most underrated uh, things uh, about investing is uh, uh, understanding history uh you don't need to understand too much of cricketing history to play cricket but for investing it is important for you to understand uh why we do certain things the way we do and why it is wrong so let me tell you this great craze for ipo uh, investing and telling people uh, you can never lose money in an ipo now looking at the ipo markets we have seen the ipo market for a long time now it's at least what 45 years 50 years old uh, from a uh, big retail participation we must thank uh, george fernandez for kicking out many of these uh, fera companies or uh, what they used to be called and they were forced to dilute that was the time when big retail participation started happening and then the god of them all uh, <clears throat> dhirubhai ambani uh, came out with amazingly big ipos Uh, the I, the IPOs were so big that they were bigger than what the Tata Group and all had ever done. And he opened the market and said, "This kind of money is there in India." So right, I think 1977 was the first IPO of Reliance. Uh, 1977, 78, 79 is when uh, all the uh, Fera issues, the Colgate, Pfizer, Siemens, uh, Cummins, all of them were forced to dilute Kodak. Uh, all those companies came out with an ipo and that was a time when people made tons of money why am i saying this because then there was something called the controller of capital issues and typical bureaucratic uh, uh, i i think i can even say that uh, how much uh, how much time you spend in delhi lobbying and uh, i'm saying lobbying in the crudest sense uh but i'm not using the real christian word for it uh decided what premium you got so there was this company called advani or like on now it's called adore a uh, good company which said oh we should get a good price because you got a good uh, book value they got 2 rupees premium 10 plus 2 right 12 rupees is when now uh, is what they got price at uh colgate got price at uh, 15 rupees premium i'm sure it had a higher book value than that and uh, garden bareilly which many people would not have even heard of uh, got a price of 85 rupees or something like that and we all used to be amused saying uh, it was so much of a lottery as to what price you got depended on your merchant banker merchant banker what he did in delhi how long he stayed who he wine dined entertained sent packets to based on that you were getting your pricing but you were more or less sure that if you got allotment you would make money a company like i think tata timken or uh, tata bearing something got uh, oversubscribed 4000 times i'm talking from memory and uh, for a morgan stanley mutual fund there were queues for, of people uh, standing in line to take that money uh, to invest that money so we have seen all these kind of things happening in uh, uh, <clears throat> in the uh, capital market so cci controlled at what price you got the share so you got colgate at 25 rupees and it listed at 90 so if you bought it 25 you sold at 90 you made capital gains or if you bought it 25 and held on till today it is worth a few lakhs right your uh, 5000 may be worth uh, or your 1250 may be worth say a crore today as i those things happened that was controller of capital issues then controller of capital issues went away and sebi came in and sebi said this is a formula you can price it at uh, any price you can come out with an ipo and um, it's up to you but you should have a 3 year profit making track record and blah 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 all these things you had to have but uh, as usual uh, the promoter and his uh, accountants could uh, paint a rosy picture and collect as much money as they want but there was no cci doing the pricing it was sebi doing the pricing and sebi really didn't do much pricing they said whatever price you think you can get from the market you will be able to take and uh, you will be able to so now this was a time when when you got an allotment maybe you made money maybe you didn't depending on how uh, smart the promoters were and uh, at what cycle you were for example i remember maruti came with a price of 125 rupees and i think it opened at 600 rupees that is just because we were at the end of a bear market and i don't think the uh, great Uh, merchant banker had the guts to price it and about that because if he had the guts he would have priced it at 625 knowing the merchant banker uh, 
uh, knowing merchant bankers in general and uh, so yes some pr were reasonably priced some were badly priced some which came in the bull market had to be withdrawn because people would not subscribe so all these things happened with sebi then one day in its great wisdom sebi said even if you are loss making you can uh, come out with an um, ipo nfo ofs whatever you want to call it and uh, you can get listed it does not matter that you are making losses as long as some anchor investors took a percentage believe me it's very difficult for people to understand and what are those rules and regulations but yes a company making losses could now come with an ipo did it help of course it helped it helped all the venture capitalists and private equity guys to get an exit because every indian now turned a venture capitalist it didn't matter what was the fair price of a nike or a paytm or a zomato it didn't matter they would Uh, just buy it at any price simply because their fathers and grandfathers told them you can never lose money in an IPO, right? So because his father made some money, maybe in coal, grandfather maybe made money in Colgate or whatever, doesn't really matter. So these people came in and said, I can never lose money in an IPO. That old theory, which was true maybe in the 70s and uh, mid 80s. Uh, whole of 80s perhaps and then they brought it and uh, said you can't lose money but it is wrong there are very many fly by night operators who said we will put up a steel mill or we'll do anything company would be based in baroda or rajkot and there'd be goats tied there when you went to see what was really happening so there was a big unlisted market where they would tell you oh by this uh, already 6 rupees on chal raha hai the company is coming out at 10 rupees but you will be able to sell it at 16 right so this kind of a thing i remember during reliance power issue uh, there was a secondary market illegally saying uh, this could even open at 1000 rupees i mean this happened in a very famous press conference i am not naming the people who made these stupid statements and nodded and said yes yes it's possible uh, well it didn't open it uh, i th i don't think it's more than 12 rupees or 13 rupees now i have not seen the price lately but that's what happened so you could have lost a lot of money apply in a uh, reliance power uh, uh, ipo i think you should go and have a look at uh, subramani.com uh, and i have written about the uh, reliance uh, the power ipo at the time of the ipo not now i said i it, i think it deserves a price of 75 rupees and not 450 rupees so i didn't subscribe i didn't buy it but it was considered to be a great phenomena of introducing school teachers from sikkim and assam and uh, arunachal pradesh and all those places they all came into the market because of this huge mega ipo so what i'm trying to say is there is no uh, uh, thing to believe that you will not lose money in an ipo ipo is just one way of coming into the market in fact good chance that uh, you will lose money in an ofs uh, ofs is uh, overpriced for sure that's how a friend of mine described because ofs is a uh, is a concept where uh, a venture capitalist comes into a company invests at 10 rupees or 20 rupees or 200 rupees and then comes out with a i ofs or offer for sale at uh, 2700 rupees and there are people willing to buy saying oh this is the story we will believe so they believe now if you are an employee of that company you are in a dilemma saying should i keep all the shares should i sell partly should i uh, uh, what should i do because i don't know because the pricing has been such that it looks like a big fortune on my plate i got 11 crores worth of shares should i sell off everything well if you were a, a ptm employee and you were smart enough to sell off everything you would have made a lot of money and you'd be laughing all the way to the bank but for any employee also you maybe uh, you sell partially you uh, sell some regularly and some you hold for life so all those uh, decisions are necessary but sorry i'm digressing uh, today pricing in an ipo or in the secondary market is independent of the regulator there is no regulator sitting there saying you make me happy and i'll give you a good price it's not true so at any price and for me pricing is a moral issue if i have taken the shares at 10 rupees 6 months ago and then i could do an ipo at 2700 rupees something is wrong with me morally forget whether it can legally be done right so every ofs which is uh, uh, which is definitely overpriced for sure range is worth avoiding and you might as well wait for it to get listed and then buy because uh, i don't apply in ipos for two reasons that one is uh, 
uh, you get a uh, very small allotment if the issue is successful and you get a big allotment if the issue is a failure very good chance that you will be able to pick it up from the market take my case of hdfc uh, limited uh, hdfc bank uh, the ipo came at 10 i got 200 shares but the, it got listed at 40 and at 40 i uh, i bought the share at 40 so after if you buy at 10 or you buy at 40 it's not that the question of was a good company was the valuation fair did you buy it did you hold on for a long time and did it compound for you if you think you can answer all these questions reasonably fairly uh, then you should apply for IPOs or uh, OFS, whatever it is. I think also the odds are terribly against you because here we are talking of smart investment bankers, maybe owning the company or at least you advising the company. So their timing of when to sell and what price is much better than what you and I know about the company. So applying in a IPO today makes no sense. Be careful, but because many people who have got allotment of maybe small amount of shares also like uh, uh, DMART or uh, Avenue Supermart as it's called in the market. These companies have made a lot of money. So even if you got 50 shares or 100 shares, you made money. So people think, oh, every, oh, every uh, IPO is good. It's not be warned. Thank you.